Okay, welcome to today's video. I'm gonna go over the full leg day formula, okay? How to build bigger legs 101, okay? I know a lot of you struggle with your legs. A lot of you are overtraining. A lot of you aren't do programming correctly. You're not um, choosing the right exercise selection. Trust me, I feel your pain. It's very, very hard for me to grow my legs as well, but I'm gonna go over every single tip and trick in the book that I did to grow my legs. Um, for those of you who have stubborn legs, maybe you're an ectomorph, maybe you have long limbs, um, this will have everything you need to know on how to build your legs. I'm going to go over exercise selection, uh, training intensity, volume, different exercises I've used to grow my legs, how to train properly, um, you know, volume intensity. I don't know if I said that already. Um, and basically everything you need to know on how to grow your legs. Now, I know you guys want me to be in the gym showing you how I actually train IRL. I actually did leg day today, which is what inspired me to do this video. And bro, hamstring curl broken, leg extension broken adduction machine broken, hip thrust machine broken, leg press broken. Literally, my gym is an absolute shambles. I need you guys to realize that. So as much as I'd love to film IRL for you guys and explain my workouts, it's just not viable, okay? Especially with the gym I have right now and, you know, a lot of other reasons. But I hope this PowerPoint is going to be enough for you guys to, you know, put into your head, what do I need to do from this day forward to start growing my legs? this will definitely help. So without further ado, let me get into it. So first of all, let me make myself a bit smaller. Okay, I'll put myself here. So first of all, you want to be doing your pressing movements, okay? Yes, isolation movements are going to grow your muscles, but they're not. you're not going to get big if you don't do your chest presses and you only do chest flies. You're not going to get big if you just do hamstring curls and not RDLs. You're not going to get big if you just do leg extensions and not squats, okay? So you need to have your... Uh, Exercise where resistance is occurring in the lengthened position as well as the shortened position. So you need to do your pressing movements. You need to do your pressing movements. And if you want to know, you know, what ones to do, here are my go-tos and I'll explain why. So number one is pendulum slash hack squat. Now, as you can see in this photo, I'm doing the hack squat. Um, the reason being, and then leg press and then free weights. So that, that, that will come into play now. Free weights by no exaggeration are the worst way to train your legs if you have the option of have it, having a pendulum squat hack squat smith squat or leg press okay free weights just require too much stability demand too much focus on the external when re in reality you want to focus on the internal muscle working you want to just feel the muscle at all times stretch contract squeeze whatever it is or whatever terminology you want to use you don't worry about you know wobbling down as you like lower the bar down or you know doing your split squats worrying about like holding you know losing your grip you, you don't want to worry about that so free weights is last on my list okay i saw oh my god my legs did not grow one bit doing barbell squats okay as soon as i switched to um hack squats and smith squats but mainly hack squats uh they exploded in growth so you want to be, if right now you're doing barbell squat, uh, uh, barbell splits, uh, I'm sorry, dumbbell split squats, stop that, okay? Just find a machine which allows you to take your mind off controlling the free weight and instead provide stability for you to just focus on the muscle at hand, okay? Now, when you're doing your squats or your leg presses, you want to do closer stance, so feet together at the bottom of the pad to emphasize the quads. And if you want to you know, emphasize the adductors, which is, you know, the in inner quad and the glutes, which is your bunda, then take a, take a slightly wider stance and higher up on the pad. Personally, I always, 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 no matter what I do, right, my bunda doesn't need any more work. Let's just, let me just put it that way. So I always feet together at the bottom of the pad, okay, and I go down, it's all quad, insane quad growth from this if you want to just target your quads if you want to grow your quads which is probably the most important part of the leg right because it's the one that stands out the most put your feet at the bottom of the pad close together and go down slowly feel the stretch in your quad and burst up okay but you can always you know do it how i put it in the second video high and wide but that's just more glutes and adductors and you know really you want to focus on getting those feathered quads right so just do i would say focus on the form in the first photo, right? Low and close together, if you want to grow your quads optimally. But both are great, okay? You're gonna see results from both, but if you wanna see more quad growth, do the first photo. 
All right, next. So next up is leg extensions. Now, I will always, 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 always do leg extensions before my squats, but I just wanted to go over the squats first because it's probably the most important movement in your whole leg day, right? That's going to, you're going to get the most bang for your buck by doing a big heavy squat. Um, obviously with slow and controlled eccentrics, um, you know, and a weight you can handle, but leg extensions come second for quad growth, right? I would love if I could just do leg extensions and not do, focus on my squats, but if you want to have the best legs possible. You want to do a leg extension, isolation movement, and a squat uh, compound movement. As you can see in this photo, I'm adjusting the seat so that it's as far back as possible, but still my, you know, the pad of the leg pad is, you know, above my ankle. So obviously I don't want to go too far. Otherwise, you know, I'm not even going to be like, I'm going to be extending it with my toes, right? But if I do it as far as back as I can, so that it's still above my feet as I extend up, that's going to be the optimal seat position for you. Obviously, everyone's different. Everyone has different uh, height and uh, proportions. But this, the reason being is you're going to feel the best stretch at the bottom of the movement when your legs are um, in the short and um, lengthened position. Um, and this is obviously very, very important for muscle growth. As we know, the most hypertrophic portion of the movement um, is the stretch mediated stretch mediated position so the stretch mediated hypertrophy occurring here so at the bottom when your muscles are fully stretched out and you're you know starting your concentric movement that's the most important movement so you want to have a maximal you want to feel that stretch at the bottom if your leg extension just stops here right that's not good right you want it to go as, as low down as possible with your legs so you can feel the best stretch um and that's done by adjusting the seat as far back as possible but still so that you're, you know, extending with your legs and not your toes, if that makes sense. Also, another thing that I've seen crazy growth with is squeezing the contraction at the top. So pausing at the top for two seconds, let's say, um, that has improved my mind muscle connection, which has allowed me to also target the upper quad, which is a very like aesthetic part of the quad. Um, so any of you wanting to see that separation, that detail in your quads, make sure you are squeezing and pausing at the top. So you see in the second photo, I'm you like, that's because I'm holding that squeeze at the top for two seconds and slowly releasing. Okay. This increases time under tension, um, but also increases muscle recru uh, fiber recruitment because you're, um, you know, you're holding that position, uh, which is going to uh, generate mechanical tension, which is going to generate muscle growth. So make sure you're pausing at the top at all times. If you really want to grow your legs, right? Also, sometimes I'll do that for two, two sets, uh, one set. And then my second set, maybe I'll just go all out. So I'll just go boom, 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 boom. I just play around with it. But if you are struggling to grow your legs, I would say pause in the contraction and focus on form. Don't just, you know, spam it like that. Okay. Or otherwise you probably won't grow. And then always, always, always staple after leg extensions is supersetting it with sissy squats. So as soon as you fail on the leg extensions, stand up, grab something to, to make sure you're balanced and do perform sissy squats. Sissy squats followed by leg extensions are insane because typically on your leg extensions, as much as you can adjust the seat for optimal stretch, it's still not going to be a maximal stretch. Whereas, and then, so, so if you follow that up with sissy squats, you can go all the way down on your tippy toes, feel the maximum stretch and then burst up to make sure when you're doing your sissy squats, you go down very slowly and then you come up, but you don't, you don't come forward and then burst up, right? You come up with your hips first. So you're still in that laid back position coming up like that. You're not coming back up and then, you know, standing up almost. You're going down and you're coming up with your hips, leading with your hips, right? I wish I could, you know, show you, but just look up, you know, a photo of how to do sissy squats. But as soon as you fail, go into sissy squats. This is going to burn. This is going to allow you to grow insanely well. Um, this is something I've recently added, added to my leg days. The pumps are insane. The growth is insane. Um, and it's just another make, it's a way to make sure that you are getting a maximal stretch, um, in your position, in your, in your, uh, followed after your leg extensions, because your leg extension sometimes doesn't allow you to, but, um, yeah, as I said, it's a complementary movement pattern as in like, you're going to basically wrap up that exercise with a burnout set of sissy squats. Um, so yeah, these are my go-to. Um, that's my go-to superset pretty much every leg day, but obviously since my leg extension machine is broken, can't really do that right now. Um, but probably my favorite part of the leg day is this, the superset with, uh, leg extensions and sissy squats. Okay. Next is some neglected muscle groups that you guys are probably 
not familiar with and wondering why you don't look big you don't have like a big lower body that you're like you're very maybe you're like you don't weigh as much as you'd like and you're like why am i so light it's because you're not growing your leg muscles and you're ignoring every leg muscle group right you're ignoring your adductors your glutes and your calves um, it's not just about leg extensions and hamstring curls right there's way more to uh your lower body than just your quads and your hamstrings so first of all if you want to have if you want to weigh more if you want to have a balanced physique if you want if you don't want to look like goofy and shorts like if you don't want to look skinny and shorts make sure you're training your adductors your calves and your glutes this this uh machine right here the isolated adductor exercise is amazing for making your legs look bigger okay yes the quadriceps are important but you are literally sacrificing so much aesthetics by not training your adductors because when you're looking at something from the someone from the front if they don't have any if they don't have big adductors they're still going to look like they have skinny legs they may have definition but they're still gonna have skinny legs whereas if you have that sweep of uh, the adductor muscle because you train them that's going to really accentuate how big your legs look from the front and really going to add to the appearance of big legs so make sure you're doing this two sets till failure you're getting a maximum stretch um and you're squeezing at the top um and you know sometimes you're going to be stronger in the stress position right so just do partials after you fail you may not come all the way together so just you know come here come here until you fail again um but make sure you're throwing that in there if you want to get bigger legs if you want to look bigger and if you want to um gain weight also hip um your glutes right for those of you who want to grow a bigger bunda that reverse adductor is not going to do much for you in terms of growth okay yes sorry the abductor the adductor it will the abductor won't okay so do your hip thrust if you want to grow your bunda um this again is going to add to the proportions and balance of your physique um you know you can't be walking around with a flat bunda okay it's, you know even as a guy you gotta train your um glutes so make sure you're doing hip thrusts if that's you if you want to grow your glutes make sure you're not half repping you're coming all the way down and you're squeezing your bunda at the top okay really hard and then you're slowly coming down focus on full hip extension um and not just like half up half down half up no go all the way down and all the way up and squeeze your arse okay uh, again two sets um to failure whenever you're 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 throwing that in there and then obviously obviously calves okay calves i know calves are really hard to grow but they can grow that's the good news okay i don't have good calf um genetics but you know with these tips that i'm about to give you i managed to grow my calves yes i'm not good we're never if you don't have big calves you're never gonna have like joe aesthetics calves or you know sebum calves or whatever rip rip to my bro by the way but it's still possible to grow your calves you'll never you'll never have insane you know bubbly calves but you still will be able to grow your calves so the main thing for calf training is emphasizing the stretched position you want to slow eccentrics of course but you want to feel like you want to milk that deep stretch on your calves for like three four seconds feel them being ripped apart whether you're doing seated or standing um to grow right the most hypertrophic portion of the movement again is these this when hypertrophy is occurring in the stretched position so at the bottom when your calves are stretched out like that that you know that pressing up from that deep stretch is the most hypertrophic part of the uh, movement and some studies have shown that even you know lengthen partials at the bottom what the hell and some studies show that even lengthen partials at the bottom um are more effective for growth than like full ranges of motion for your calf raises so it's kind of crazy but make sure you're just getting a deep stretch what the fuck is happening just make sure you're getting a deep stretch at the bottom okay at all times you're not stopping halfway right okay what the fuck
Now for your hamstrings, okay? Two main points here. One is, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna keep it straight with you. The literature and my personal experience both support this following point. Seated hamstring curls are more effective than lying hamstring curls at growing for one simple reason. You're more, you're, you're more stable in the position and you can leverage the stretch. Always think when you're doing movements, what, where do I, do I feel an insanely painful stretch when I'm doing this movement? If not, choose the alternative, which allows you to feel the stretch. As you can see in this photo, right? Yeah, this photo, yes, I'm getting like a decent stretch on my hamstrings here, but not the same you know, painful stretch as I would if I was doing this, right? And notice how this guy is coming forward. He's coming forward, he's not lying back. The reason this guy has perfect form right here. Make sure you come up forward like this. This will accentuate the stretch you feel in your hamstring and will lead to more growth. Again, the stretch mediated portion of the movement is the most hypertrophic. So you always want to feel the maximum stretch. That is the key to hamstring growth. Fe slowly releasing the weight and dying in the stretch, okay? So I would always opt in for a seated over a lying, um, but since, you know, my gym's fucking broken, the machine, uh, so I'll, I'll go for the lying machine. But, you know, you're gonna see great results for, with both. I would just say, my personal experience, hands down, if you want that hamstring sweep, seated hamstring curls. But again, you're not gonna just grow with isolation movements. You need to do your compound movements. So a stiff legged RDL variation, whether that's using a pitch shark machine, which is pretty fancy, probably don't have it, or Smith machine S SLDL, dumbbell SLDL, or barbell SLDL. Straight legged, flat back, come down without your, as far as you can without your uh, back caving like this and come up, okay? Again, feeling the painful stretch, you won't, you'll literally be in pain if you do this properly the next day in your hamstrings, um, all the way down, three, four second eccentrics, two second pause in the stretch and come up. So you wanna get these two movements when training your hamstrings or when doing your leg days. Um, maybe one week do your isolation, one week do your uh, compound. But you need both to grow optimally and to get big hamstrings. You can't just rely on curls. You have to do and extensions, you have to do squats and RDLs, okay? So, Next up, final pointers for you guys. If you don't train legs properly, frequently, consistently, hard, you're gonna have an imbalanced physique. You may have a great upper body, but if you don't have the lower body to match that, you won't look as impressive as you could if you were to you know, give leg day proper training. So make sure you're training legs consistently, okay? Consistency is the number one factor to growth, right? Without consistency, you're not gonna grow, right? But also make sure you're training and getting in all those all these exercises which I've mentioned today and focusing on progressing progressive link, progressive overloading, getting stronger week by week. Okay. It's okay to intuitively train when you're a beginner, but if you want to keep on growing, you need to make sure that you're increasing the weight and or the amount of reps you do week by week. Okay. If one week you do a Smith squat for eight reps, next week make sure you get nine reps with the same exact perfect form. And then 10 and then 11, etc. And once you get 12 then increase the weight maybe by five pounds, okay? But make sure you're getting stronger so that you can see leg growth consistently. You can see consistent progress. You don't have to get down about not seeing progress. It's very, you know, mathematical, okay, guys? Muscle growth is very mathematical. If you're not growing, it's because you're doing something wrong, which I probably touched on in this video. So you also wanna be tailoring your number of exercises and volume and, and intensity and frequency uh, accordingly, okay? Some general advice I'd give you everyone's different. You're going to need personal coaching at the end of the day, if you want to really optimize your training, but as a general rule of thumb, four to six exercises per session. Okay. Of leg, uh, leg exercises and five to 10 sets to failure per muscle group per week. Okay. That's what I do. That's what I've seen the best growth from four to six exercises per workout, five to six, five to 10 sets per fa to failure per muscle group per week. Okay. So whether that's five to 10, five to 10 sets to failure on for hamstrings, calves, quads, whatever it is, right? But in your actual workout, maybe pick two quads, two hamstrings, two calves, or two quads, two glutes, um, two hamstrings. And, you know, next point is you can adjust your exercise selection to focus on certain muscle groups, right? 
if you want to just have a hamstring dedicated day where you do four hamstrings and two calves or two quads or two glutes, or you want to do, you know, just a quad day where you just do four hard ass exercises for quads. So you just go balls to the wall and you have to leave. You can't even walk um, after the fourth exercise, or you can just do, you know, a, a glute focused or a quad focus or a hamstring focus, but you don't have to do, you know, a mix of quad, hamstring, calves, and glutes, right? You can just pick two and just, you know, focus on that. And then next week, focus on the other two. But it, re- it really doesn't matter. Some people grow better with the one uh, type of programming. Some people grow better with the other. Um, I tend to just, you know, pick four to six of all sorts of muscle groups, right? Uh, but every, you, you do what uh, works for you. Okay, thank you for watching, guys. Uh, I know you would probably prefer if this was IRL. Again, I wish I could, bro, but my gym is just really unideal um, for filming. And, you know, the machines are all broken. The machines aren't good, whatever, whatever. But I know I um, said daily vids. I'm going to try keep consistent again with daily vids. Just got caught up with a lot of work. But make sure to check out Barbell Power. They're having a 50% off sale. You can get any jeans, chinos, trousers. You want these are athletic slim fit they make you look aesthetic they feel amazing the jeans are literally like wearing sweatpants um and you know it's 100 percent guarantee if they don't fit if you don't like them you can get a full refund you can swap them out for a different color or a different type so make sure to check that out in the description check out aesthetics club for free 30 plus free training programs 300 plus free meal prep recipes you're never going to find an opportunity like this go join aesthetics club before you don't have access to it. Next, join Aesthetics School if you want one-on-one coaching with me to really maximize your physique's potential and for once and for all, grow into what you've always wanted to do, build your dream physique because we can't do it by ourselves. We need to get guidance from somewhere. If you really want to dial in your physique and just change your body and change your life, join uh, Aesthetics School and work with me and we'll do that within three months. Join the newsletter for the secrets I don't share on YouTube and you know fitness tips and all sorts of other, you know, rants of me tweaking and Instagram for, you know, exclusive content. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.